It was about culture, it was about history, it was about economics, and people did like the taste of liquor. And some who didn't drink it used it for medicine, and some people um, knew that uh, outsiders would buy it and they, they would pay a premium for it, so they, they kept doing it. The study of the production of white liquor in this county has been something that there's a lot of both folklore about and tr some truths about, and so we've been interested in that for a large number of years. I think what a lot of people don't realize is that in the 18th and 19th century, um, probably 80% of the farms in this region had a still in their inventory. And it was an agricultural process that usually was done in the fall of the year uh, with crops that were left over, whether it was apples to make brandy or corn to make corn liquor. It was a way to process a crop to take it to market to sell. But it was a process that was done within the community that all people knew about and they knew how to do. So it wasn't something that just came about. It was a tradition that had been in Europe that came over with them and they continued on with it here. What made this the perfect place for all of this to happen? First, you go back to the time period when people were bringing alcohol technology to the region. Their stills were modeled after, or even perhaps came from Ireland, uh, where, where uh, moonshine, the word, was first used, as far as I know. Now, in the South, in the 1920s and 30s, there was still a problem of rebuilding from the Civil War. Now, you don't think about it for that time, but when you had an entire region, part of this country, that their money became a base of zero, they had to build from the ground up. And that took time. So you had in a lot of rural areas people that felt they needed to have some type of income, something for their families. You have people who have gone to areas where the land is so steep and the fields so small that they're unable to, to sell grain or any other agricultural product on a broad enough scale to, to pay for their family's needs. You also have in those same hollows, by coincidence in some ways, delicious and cold stream water that's used for cooling the coils and also for the basic ingredients of, of moonshine. And then you have legal distilleries that had begun to advertise throughout the United States that this is the best whiskey because of our water, because of our ingredients, because it's local. And so uh, you mix all of that with the depression and they said, well, what can we turn to? We can go to the coal mines, we can go to, that's over in West Virginia, that's not here or we can go down to the textile mills that these new entrepreneurs have started building and down at, along the fall line in the Carolinas and Danville, Virginia. But do we want to work for a dollar a day? Do we want to trade being somewhat independent for a job that might not even last the rest of this year? We know about the bread lines. We're, we know what we're doing here. There's a great story that back during the 20s, that Dominion Sugar Company was selling more sugar in Franklin County than they were selling in New York City. And one of the vice presidents of the company decided he wanted to see what was going on in Franklin County. And he took the train down, came down, arrived in Ferrum, got off, stood on the platform, looked at the rural community, got back on the train and left and knew exactly what was taking place. I think that the making of liquor was something that some people within the community accepted, others did not. A friend of mine once said that Ferrum, the area around Ferrum, everyone was involved in the making of whiskey except the Baptist ministers and they were selling the barrels. But I think a lot of people accepted it. It was a way of making a living and it supported things within the community. A lot of people just turned their head and acted as if it wasn't taking place. I think those people were working to make a living. This was something that was a livelihood. It was a job, it was uh, an occupation. Well, there have been the periodic rediscoveries by the New York Times and Washington Post of liquor production in this county. Probably the largest still ever discovered was in the 1970s. 
So it is still being done, but now it's some people who just do a little bit on the side just for their own home consumption. And then there are the people who really try to make a, an illegal operation out of it. I think Franklin County, like a lot of places in the, the U.S., is still uh, worried about where the jobs are going to come from in the, in the coming era for those who are graduating high school and so on, and they're trying to lure jobs here. But even in the midst of all of that, there's still a deep pride in place. There's a great agricultural tradition here. We do see people that still stay here when they get out of school, and people want to settle here. So I see this as a hopeful area still to this day.